everyone, uh, my name is Rida Fameen and I'm from Tamil Nadu, India and I study MSc in Speech and Language Therapy at City University of London. Studying in university that puts inclusion as its top priority was very, very important for me. As a speech and language therapist in the future, I aim to help people with communication disabilities gain wider access in our community. And when I came across the disability and social inclusion seminars conducted at City, I realised that this university is taking small steps to destroy ableism and also having access to in-house clinics and um, professors who not only have years of experience under their wings but also networks across the globe would enrich my postgraduate experience. And before um, the application process I started getting in touch with a lot of people and I also got to um, talk to an SLT student from City University uh, on the Unibuddy platform and she talked about the wide area of placement students get to be in, um, the professors um, and how inclusive the student society at City is which motivated me to choose City University as my top choice. I have always been fascinated by the study of the human body and mind, which is basically human anatomy and physiology and psychology. So as a high school student, when I was quite confused with, you know, if I should go down the medical school path or if I should take up psychology, I just started doing some research and I came across speech and language therapy as a profession. And coming from a multi-linguistic and a multicultural background, I also realised that the linguistic aspect of this course was very intriguing for me. So it was almost like a beautiful blend of all the things that I enjoyed studying. And having studied this course for quite a bit, I also love how we are pillars of support for people during moments of confusion and celebration, which is a very, very gratifying experience. So before joining my current course at um, City, I completed my undergraduate degree in audiology and speech language pathology at the All India Institute of Speech and Hearing in Mysore. And while I was on that course, I found myself being more interested in speech and language, which motivated me to apply um, for a master's of science degree in the same field. And apart from my studies, I also volunteered in a non-governmental organisation called you and I, where I tutored um, underprivileged children and I also spent a lot of time volunteering um, and taking leadership roles in the National Service Scheme at my institute and we organised and I also participated in multiple activities that helped promote uh, students' individual growth and thought about like how all of us can come together to contribute to society. So we would attend like walkathons, treks um, and multiple other activities. University life in London has been amazing for me so far. I think I always wanted to study in a multicultural hub to kind of develop a lot of skills as a healthcare professional and meet people from all walks of life, which I am doing on my placement, and that has been a very inspiring experience. And I don't think I would have been able to do that if I didn't choose to be in London. And apart from that, I think the university central location um, allows me to balance my academic and social life because I get to travel to the popular parts of the city quite easily and London has so much to offer from museums to shows to amazing food from all over the world um, you, there's something for everyone and it's also very easy to go on day trips or like weekend trips outside of London because the transport system is so well established so just remember to use your student offers um, well and I think you're good to go. In terms of academics, um, I think the intensity of the course isn't too different um, from my undergraduate degree in India to my postgraduate degree here in London. Um, but I think the structure of um, the term is slightly different. Um, for example, in London right now in my course, um, I have two days of lectures, um, in-person lectures, one day of placement and one day of online lectures. 
And then the fifth day of the week is to kind of prepare for the lectures that we uh, attend in person and also consolidate our learning and go through research articles and just spend some time on self-directed learning. And I think that really, really helps me and the structure kind of works for me very well because I also get to plan my part-time work and my social life around this schedule. So I think it really helps. My favourite moment at City University definitely has to be my first day. Um, I did attend all the welcome week activities the week before and got accustomed to the university but when I walked in on my first day of lectures into a lecture hall amongst, and I was sitting amongst like a sea of hundred other people, I was very scared and nervous. Um, I was pretty much like a confident girl throughout my life but that one day I just couldn't get myself to speak. Um, but after I think one or two lectures we had a tutorial session where it was just 12 of us and a professor and I'm really really grateful to all my peers and my professor for making me feel um, like putting me at ease, making me feel welcomed and just they helped me settle in and I never forget that feeling where you know all my worries kind of melted away and I was so excited for uh, you know life in London so yeah that would be my favorite moment speech and language therapy is a very interesting and unique course because within one day of lectures you might spend the first hour diving into the depths of the human brain's anatomy and the next hour trying to produce sounds from various languages across the world from blowing bubbles with little children to counseling an elderly patient um, post-stroke, this variety extends to placements as well. Talking about placements, I'm currently placed in a hospital setting um, and I work with a community rehabilitation team and we help people with communication and or eating, drinking and swallowing disorders. Um, so that ties in very well with the dysphagia module where we learn about swallowing disorders um, and learning about the intricacy and the complexity of the swallowing mechanism really, really excites me. We also discuss and go through multiple case studies together um, in our lectures, so that really helps me consolidate all my knowledge and apply it when I'm on placement. Apart from my course, I have signed up for multiple ambassador schemes at City to earn additional income, but as I started working on it, I realized that I'm also gaining a lot of soft skills. For example, I once worked with the finance team to give input on how the cost of living crisis is affecting students and what the university can do to help. And we saw some suggestions actually being implemented. This taught me a lot about the importance of my voice and sharing my opinion and also made me feel seen and heard as a student. I think apart from my job, I am a part of the Arab Society and I attend um, events hosted by the City Student Union and the Postgraduate Network as well, which helps with networking. But I think majorly I like to attend these events because I get to taste food from like different cultures um, and I think that's my favourite bit. <laughs> um, so I ensure that I attend at least one or two events um, every month. Speech language therapy is a profession of service where you need to be really sensitive to a client's needs and devise creative plans to address them. You might walk into a session with a perfect plan, but the patient might be too tired to attempt those tasks, so you need to quickly think of different ways to achieve the same goal. And I think this creativity and flexibility has impacted um, and helped me a lot in my personal life too. Secondly, I think the intensity of this course and how empathetic you have to be on placement might sometimes lead to burnout and exhaustion. So that's when I understood the importance of setting some time apart for myself and how important it really is to manage my time appropriately um, to ensure that I'm serving and helping people without feeling drained myself. Thirdly, um, I realised that it's not possible to convince a client or a patient that it's okay to make mistakes and be different unless I believe in it myself. My short-term goal is to expand my expertise in fields that I'm currently interested in, which is language disorders and motor speech disorders across the lifespan. 
but in the future I aim to take on more administrative roles by formulating and implementing policies that promote inclusion and accessibilities in developing countries. I feel supported in achieving these goals because majority of our lectures are inherently inclusion driven where we're not just trying to think of solutions to a patient's problem um, or symptom but we're focusing on improving their overall quality of life um, and I think that is a highlight in nearly all our modules which is brilliant. Additionally, I think um, most of our professors have connections across the globe and are working on projects that are community driven. So I think I'm really excited and I'm looking forward to the dissertation project um, which we get to do next year where I can contribute um, and really try to understand how to put these ideas into practice. Apart from this, I think my part-time work at university um, has helped me meet people and make connections with people and peers that um, are on different career paths and also alumni um, from our university. So I think I'm building a very good solid network of people that I can depend on when I work on my future goals. What excites me the most about speech language therapy and the future of our society even is that more of us are setting acceptance and inclusion as the foundation for our assessments, management and research work, which means more speech and language therapists will be sensitive to culture and neurodivergence and that would result in a very, very inclusive society and community. Here's some advice for future master students. First of all, time management is key. So it is possible to have a social life and an academic life um, and set some time apart for your hobbies as well, but I think it all comes from time management. We get our timetables um, before the term starts, so I think it's very important to have a good look at that and kind of schedule different activities around it. There might be some weeks that are more um, academically driven, as in you might have more assignments, more work to do. There might be some weeks where you get to spend some time chilling with your friends more often. So I think having a balance is very important. But also, um, I think setting some time apart for your hobbies and just spending time with yourself in every day or if, pos if that's not possible every week is very, very important to avoid burnout. So prioritize all of those things and just focus on um, allotting time for each of these activities properly. I think that can get you through your master's degree without um, the major burnout that most of us tend to feel. Um, and don't worry if you're struggling with it, it definitely will take some time to um, figure out your rhythm, but just having that at the back of your head as you start your master's degree is very important. And City University also offers multiple courses and videos on Moodle to kind of help you with like hone those skills. So that's very important um, and helpful. And I think the second point is um, don't be afraid to meet new people, um, especially when you're on a master's program. I think people come in from all walks of life. Um, they are in different stages of their life. Some of them are married. Some of them have just come out of their undergrad degree. Um, and I think it's wonderful to have these fresh new perspectives on like different topics, even on life in general. Um, and I think being open to all of these discussions and meeting new people um, helps build very authentic relationships that can help you get through your degree um, and even support your profession and your life after that and also helps you um, hone your networking skills which will take time to build um, but it's not that difficult. So yeah, be open to meeting new people. Um, and lastly, a very small academic point or tip rather is um, don't be afraid to ask questions and to interact with the professors. Most of them are very, very passionate about the course and um, they for sure will think that um, no question is a silly question. So go ahead and ask, clarify all your doubts, engage in classes and get the most out of your degree. Have fun!